If you have an interest in learning to type fast or ergonomically, you may have heard of stenography. Stenography is a method of text input that allows one to write an entire words or phrases as opposed to individual letters on a regular keyboard. Its ultimate use is in transcribing spoken word at conversational speeds. Stenography is primarily utilized in the legal field, making transcripts for depositions and court proceedings. It can also be found in live TV, where a stenographer is captioning everything that is being said in real time. Human speech is around 180 words per minute, but that's just an average. In regular conversation, it's not uncommon for people to be speaking faster than 250 words per minute in short bursts. If you want to try and type at that speed, well, good luck. Sean Rona is frequently cited as one of the fastest typists in the world, being able to type a blazingly fast average of 175 words per minute. On the other hand, stenographers have to pass a 225 words per minute speed test in order to graduate school. And the fastest certification given by the NCRA is the RMR, which includes a 260 words per minute Q&A testimony transcription. So how does Steno work? This is a Steno keyboard. You notice there are many repeat letters and many letters that aren't even there. In Steno, you write in whole sounds to make entire words or phrases. So the left hand fingers deal with the beginning consonants, the thumbs are responsible for the vowels, and the ending consonant sounds are taken by the right hand fingers. To write the word cat, you would press down the K, A, and T keys all at once like so, and the word cat comes out. To write the word straps, you would press down the S, T, R, A, P, and S keys. It's a mostly phonetic system, but there are a few odd quirks. Because we don't have keys for all the letters, we use chords to represent these missing sounds. For example, we use HR on the left hand to mean a starting L sound, since there are no words in English that start with HR. Similarly, we use E and U to denote the I sound. To write the word lid would be like this, H-R-E-U-D. Some other chords that are memorized include P-H as M, P-L as M, and A-O-E-U as a long I vowel. This is what a steno layout looks like with almost all the chorded sounds shown. It looks very daunting at first, but keep in mind that these are memorized gradually. When writing multisyllable words, we simply string strokes together. To write the word memorized, you would press down P-H-E-P-L for mem, release that, and then press down the keys that sound the word rise, that is R, long I, Z, memorize. Notice how member comes out with the first stroke. This is called a brief. It is a common word that we want to make easy to write in one stroke. These can be arbitrarily assigned, but there is usually a reason behind them. Some other briefs include PW as about, HR as will, and SG as something. In addition to memorization of chords and briefs, there are other rules that are theory specific. A steno theory can be memory intensive like Magnum or stroke intensive like Phoenix. A stroke intensive theory allows you to stick to the rules very consistently and makes learning vocabulary much easier. But this is at the cost of requiring more strokes per word on average. Memory intensive theories use a lot of briefs and phrase briefs that allow more words to be written with fewer strokes. Plover theory strikes a middle ground between the two. So what about the software? Steno software uses dictionaries to translate your strokes. This is what a dictionary can look like. It is a JSON file containing over 140,000 entries. I use some other dictionaries in addition to this main one. I have a dictionary for UK and American spellings, a dictionary for phrases, and I have one for miscellaneous entries. I even have a dictionary for emojis. Adding your own entries is really easy and seamless. I just press a chord or the button in my Steno software and I define it like so. This is useful for internet slang, proper nouns, or really anything that you would type often. The Steno software I and many other hobbyists use is Plover. What makes Plover different from other Steno engines is that it is completely free. Steno software is very expensive. This is mainly because it is aimed towards professionals and not hobbyists. In the long ago, Mirror by Night, a Steno captioner, was fed up with how this prevented hobbyists and tinkerers from having access to Steno. You couldn't just Google how to learn it. You'd have to go to a for-profit Steno school, rent or buy an expensive machine as well as the software, and have a hard time graduating. The dropout rate for Steno schools is 85%. This is really crushing on the students, not just from a financial point of view, but it is also very demoralizing. A lot of these students just couldn't quite reach that 225 words per minute speed to graduate and found out too late that Steno is not for them. Another way Plover is different from other Steno engines is that it is not CAT software. CAT, or Computer Aided Transcription, is software used for making transcripts mainly in the legal field. They're great for that, but they don't really allow you to do much else. Most CAT software don't really let you interact with the rest of the operating system. With Plover, you can use stenography to do anything that a regular keyboard can. 
You can use stenography to write emails, type up documents, talk to friends, or even code. You can also use stenography to write long-winded and incensed YouTube comments just to prove how correct your point is. Knight wanted stenography available for hobbyists and tinkerers and thus founded the Open Steno Project, an organization aimed to promote free and open source stenography. It is truly an amazing technology that anyone should be able to learn. Thanks to efforts from her and many others involved in the Open Steno Project, there is free software, free resources, and inexpensive hardware for anyone to teach themselves stenography. So why should an ordinary person learn steno anyway? What are its advantages over regular typing? Well, first of all, there's the obvious speed benefit. Writing at 200 words per minute and above is tried and true. The world record holder for the fastest stenographer is Mark Kislingbury at a staggering 360 words per minute. However, a speed of 180 words per minute is more or less sufficient for most everyday uses. What is fast writing good for? Well, if you've ever tried typing something out, you notice that your fingers often lag behind your thoughts, especially if you're a slow typist. Most people type much slower than the speed at which they think, and that makes it harder to articulate ideas effectively or efficiently. With Steno, you spend more time thinking about what you want to say and less time is spent on boring typing. Being able to write and keep up with your thoughts is, in my opinion, very advantageous. You may be skeptical and think to yourself that your typing speed doesn't hold back your thoughts. Maybe that's the case, but it's hard to comment on an experience that you've never had. Of course, this is all just anecdotal. There's no research on how slow typing hinders your writing ability. But I am sure there are a lot of people who would really like to be able to type faster. With Steno, a speed of 150 words per minute is pretty much guaranteed with practice and patience. I'm not positive that the same could be said for typing. The next big advantage that Steno has is that it is much more ergonomic. Any time I have to write for more than 5 minutes, I prefer to use Steno. Writing in Steno is so comfortable because your fingers are always on the home row. Take a look at me typing in QWERTY and Colmac, as well as writing in Steno. You can see that there is a whole lot less finger movement, and keep in mind that my steno speed is almost twice as fast as my regular typing. Stenographers have to write on their machines for long periods of time without a break, demonstrating the ergonomic argument. Your fingers aren't constantly moving all over the place. It is a much more graceful text input method. This also applies to backspacing. In steno, you simply press the asterisk key and your previous stroke is deleted. No need to deal with deleting the correct number of characters or fiddling with the cursor to fix that typo 8 characters back. Steno is a great alternative for people with RSI or some other injury which prevents them from typing on a regular keyboard. You may think that writing symbols and thus coding would be quite difficult since Steno is multi-phonetic. However, this is not the case. Stroking the word bracket looks like this, but to stroke a square bracket symbol looks like this. All I'm doing is taking that word bracket and removing the vowels. That may seem arbitrary, but it's really simple and easy to remember as a rule for a lot of symbols. For others, it's easy enough just to remember the Steno stroke pronunciation. You can find parentheses as pren, or the plus symbol as plus with an asterisk. You can also define your own entries for anything code related. For example, I could define ripped, R-I-P-T, to be raw input underscore with parentheses and quotes. With that said, coding in Steno is not going to come by itself. Ted Morin, the lead developer of Plover, has mentioned that it took him 8 months to be able to write at his typing speed, and another 16 months to be able to code in Steno. I would not recommend stenography only for coding as the learning curve would be very steep. The unavoidable question that's going to be inevitably asked is, how long does it take to learn stenography? Here's a chart showing the length that took various Plover users to reach their old typing speed. The general consensus is 6 months to a year. It all depends on your current typing speed, how fast you pick up stenography, and how much time you spend practicing each day. Personally, I started learning on the 29th of February, and it wasn't until mid-June I was able to write at my typing speed of 90 words per minute. This was with about an hour or two of practice every day. And currently, I'd say that for most literature, my steno speed is around 140 words per minute on the low end and 180 words per minute on the high end. When it comes to multilingual support in Plover, most languages would require a system plugin for a different layout, as well as a theory and its accompanying dictionary. I've linked a page below containing information on languages that have either been completed in steno or are in development. Members of the Plover Discord server are also working on their own theories for languages. So that's about all I can really say about Plover and stenography. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to answer them. Mirror by Night has also wrote many articles on a blog talking about why the ordinary person might want to learn steno. They cover a lot of what I have talked about as well as many other aspects in much more detail. I've included the link below as well as some useful resources if you want to start learning now. 
I would also encourage you to join the Plumber Discord server as we're more than happy to answer your questions there.